in this video, I'm going to be breaking down every graphical setting there is. Clearly stating whether or not that graphical setting increases or decreases FPS. And to show this, my benchmarking PC is a Ryzen 5 3600 with an RTX 2060 graphics card running with 32GB of RAM. So to start this video and provide an example of the way things are going to be running, I'll be talking about field of view. With the field of view set at 80, which is what most console players played on Modern Warfare with, I ran with 115 frames. When I bumped that up to 90, I managed to get a 6 frame increase. At 100 frames, I got a 9 frame increase. At 110, I got 11 frame increase. And finally, at 120 field of view, I got a 13 frame increase. Now that probably did surprise you with the higher field of view, you actually ran with better frames. But that does make sense because when you're zoomed in more with the lower field of view, your computer has to draw in more details. So altogether, I went with 110 field of view to provide 126 frames per second. Now for the rest of the video, I'm not going to sit down and explain why things turned out the way they did. That would make the video way too long. Therefore, from now on, I'll be presenting my findings, showcasing what frames per second I get from the lowest setting then showing how much the frames increase or decrease as I heighten the settings. Make sense? Awesome. Let's get into it. Display mode. At windowed, we ran at 128 frames per second. When I changed this to full screen or windowed full screen, it went down two frames. But I ended up using windowed full screen because I like alt tabbing out of games and checking something else. In video reflex, nothing showed any difference between the three settings of off, enabled and enabled boost. Therefore, I left it on enabled plus boost in order to give the lowest input lag. Render resolution. My display monitor runs at a native 2K resolution. 1440p to be precise and this would indicate 100 on this scale when i turn this down to 50 to output a 720p display i run it at 215 frames when i increase this to 75 to output 1080p i lose 45 frames when i increase this again to 100 to display a 1440p output i lose 122 frames when i increase this even further to display 125 percent at an upscaled 1800p I lose 122 frames. And finally, at 150%, upscale to 4K 2160p, I lose 143 frames per second. Personally, I want to run at my native resolution at 1440p. Yes, I only get 126 frames per second, but if you wanted a quick fix and an easy upgrade in frames, I would lower this to 75, but go no further. Now moving on to the details, the texture quality. At the lowest setting, I hit 124 frames per second. Putting this to low, I lose one frame medium i lose two frames at high settings i lose seven frames and finally at ultra i lose 12 frames i do like a little bit of fidelity so i've upped this to medium setting to only lose two frames moving on to the model quality i ended up running two tests with this because it didn't show any difference no matter what i did in both tests it didn't show an increase or a decrease with frames between low medium and high with this one in particular it showed 132 across the board but i chose a medium at 132 frames frames just in case there is a scenario where it does impact performance. Special effects quality. This kind of depends a lot on what the situation is happening. So at medium, I was left with 116 frames per second. And when I changed this to high, it was negative one. Therefore, I just left it on medium. With screen space reflections disabled, I was left with 105 FPS. At low, I got a negative four frames and at high, I got a negative six frames. Therefore, I just left it on disabled. With the setting object view distance, you're telling the PC at what distance that object should be drawn in. If you look at this example on screen at low, you can't see the blue object and we run at 100 frames per second. At medium, you can see it though and we still run at 100 frames per second. But when we turn it up to high, we can still see it and probably even further. We only lose one frame per second. Therefore, I chose the option high as we only lose one frame. Now, with this last one, the water tessellation really affects maps that have a lot of water in there on disable we were running at 123 frames per second but when we enabled this setting that dropped down by 10 frames to be honest with you there's not many maps with water on and i'm not really that bothered what the water looks like so i only chose disabled as it gives me a 10 frame increase moving on to the shadow and lighting the volumetric lighting basically is weird <laughs> 
Well, that's the best way I could describe it. When I was testing this, I didn't know if I was in the right spot. Tried multiple different spots, all kind of showed the same results. So I went from one particular results that I ended up gathering. On low, I was running at 128 frames per second. When I changed this to medium, it didn't really change anything on screen, and I was still at 128 frames per second, receiving a 0% change. Percent frame change. There we go. Now, finally, on high, we did lose seven frames. And again, that really didn't show any difference, so I just left it on medium. Now, shadow quality. This is a weird one because it relates to dynamic shadows. When dynamic shadows is off, shadow quality doesn't change. It only drops one frame when going up to ultra. Now, due to the fact nothing changes with the shadow quality until it reaches ultra, we left it on high for this moment of testing. When we went to dynamic shadowing, we was at disabled 131 frames. When we turned on self only, we dropped by seven. And when we turned on all, we dropped by 18 frames. Now at the end, when I tested both, I left dynamic shadows on disabled and then turned down shadow quality to low. Special effects shadows on disabled, we have 95 frames per second. And when it's enabled, we increase frames by three. Not really sure why, but I chose that one anyway. Finally, weapon shadow, a disabled 117 frames. And when we enabled it, we dropped down one frame. I quite like that one frame, so I'm gonna leave it on. <laughs> Moving on to ray tracing, I didn't test for ray tracing. I personally do not like it inside of competitive play to try and gain the most frames because when you turn on ray tracing, it will reduce frames. It's just inevitable. But I did try and test it with the ray tracing sun aspect and it didn't change frames. In fact, it actually changes the percentage, the way the card works. It's weird testing ray tracing, so I didn't do it at all. I apologize. Now moving on to the post processing effects with the pixie dust called DLSS. If you have an NVIDIA card, you'll know that this is pixie dust as it increases your frames dramatically. On disabled, I was running at 121 frames per second at 1440p. When I changed this to ultra, I actually increased that to 182 frames. On performance, I was running at 163 frames. On balanced, I was running at 151 frames. And finally, on quality, I was running at 140 frames. Now, DLSS does give you some recommendations of what you should be using in relation to what resolution you're running on your native display. Because each one does a different thing. Ultra reduces your resolution dramatically, but quality-wise tries to keep the fidelity as much as possible. Now, looking at this, you have to decide for yourself. My monitor can only go up to 144 frames per second. Anything more than that would be basically useless. But because I want to hit 144 frames, I'm not going with quality. In fact, I went with balance to give the most fidelity and performance side there is. And it also gives about seven frames of leeway just in case a certain scene becomes really populated. Now with anti-aliasing quality, when you activate DLSS, it actually disables it automatically. So with that disabled, it was 124 frames per second. But if you don't have the DLSS option, this is how it affected performance. At lowest, I got a six frame drop. On low, I ended up losing seven frames. At medium, I lost 13 frames. But for some reason at high, I only lost 12 frames. An actual increase of one from medium. Don't know why. At ultra, I dropped 16 frames. Again, I don't know what happened between medium and high. It showed it in two separate tests did this as a slight increase. Personally, I would choose low if I didn't have DLSS. But if you really don't like the jagged edges, which anti-aliasing actually fixes, then I would potentially go medium or high. Now another power hungry one is called ambient quality. Pretty much here at disabled I was 147 frames. When I changed this to low I got an 8 frame drop. On medium I got another 12 frame drop. High was the same at 12 frame drop. And at ultra I dropped 16 frames. So I ended up just sticking with disabled. Motion blur I don't like motion blur so I didn't test it. Sorry. <laughs> the next one is surface scattering. At disabled we were hitting 105 fps. And when this was enabled, we dropped one frame. Personal preference, but I chose and disabled. And lastly, order independent transparency. The first test, it showed it didn't change anything. And to be honest, I couldn't see any change either. But the second test when I was inside actually dropped significantly. On disabled, we were running 147 frames per second. But when we went to low, medium or high, that dropped by eight. 
so I just left it undisabled. Now I realized throughout all this testing the initial disabled was showing different results and that's simply because it was in different areas doing different things. I could have left this as a statistic of saying nothing and then literally said it decreased by 6, decreased by 7 but I really wanted to show you what I was hitting in different areas of the map and different things in the game. But this has been the video, hopefully this has helped you have better understanding of what each graphical setting does and what you could turn on and turn off in order to increase your frames per second and not only that but the sacrifice you have to take in order to get better fidelity in your graphics you can weigh it up yourself is all dynamic shadows at high settings really that worthwhile the 18 frame drop or you can decide yourself now you have that statistics in front of you and you can make a decision of what you think is relevant what you think is not relevant to your game but my name is Conix. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been informative. If you did like what you see here, did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe for more of this content. And also a quick side thing. Do you like the sound of this mic? It's a new microphone. Hopefully you do. Let me know. For those who have stick through this entire video right up until the 11th minute mark, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Let me know in the comments. Let the other people be confused. Did you enjoy the sound? Just say yes or no. <laughs> but yeah. Appreciate it guys, see you in the next one, all the best, bye bye for now.